WBGO on 88.3 FM, WBGO.org. And we're on your mobile devices where the music lives worldwide. And I'm so happy to be here with my very, very special guest. You know, they call March Women's History Month, but I think if you know me, I don't need a special month to celebrate mm -hmm. the amazing women of this music. So I'm so happy to finally be talking to, you know, when you play people's music, you feel like you know them. So to really yeah. get here and to talk to Miss Jane Bennett, this is going to be a lot of fun. Jane Bennett of Jane Bennett and Makeke. See, I heard, I was listening to Bobby's uh, interview with you and I'm like, I got to try to say Makeke the way that he says it. So, uh, so authentically. <laughs> You're saying just, it perfectly. <laughs> just representing the nice. culture. How are you, how are you doing? Um, you know, it's been it's been a haul, but um, I've got these young women in my group. They're like half my age, but um, more than half my age. Uh, but they, you know, they give me a lot of energy and um, they're a wonderful team. Uh, they're just marvelous, marvelous musicians that um, continue to just grow and develop. And um, that has just been a very a uh, very special um, thing to witness, you know, as a, as a band leader, you know, just to see everyone's now, you know, writing for the band. Um, our very first record, I did most of the, the composing <clears throat> along with Daimi Arosena, um, who was one of the former members of McKeke. And, uh, but now everybody, we're got three records out and we're working on our fourth. Um, so now everybody is like really contributing. And I've just seen the, the group just, develop into something truly unique, which is what was my intention. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of your intention, this started out as a project, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, ne did you, you never really planned for Makeke to be a touring and recording project of amazing women. Absolutely not. <laughs> That's crazy. You know, they say the creator has a master plan. So I bet when you were sitting she there, he was up there. Every man. Yeah. And he said, she doesn't know what I have Good in woman. store. That's right. It's That's true. Right. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, you know, it came out of, uh, for, you know, good 30 years, I've had, um, a group called Spirits of Havana with my husband, who's a trumpet player, Larry Kramer and producer, and many really incredible musicians have come through Spirits of Havana, um, people like Pedrito Martinez, Daphne Prieto, Elio Villafranca, um, there's a long list, Carlitos de Puerto, I'm going to leave lots of people out as I as I name them, but um, a lot of these guys were all young guys that came through our band in the initial stages back in 1990 when we uh, started the group. And um, so I was the only woman in the group and that was never, I didn't have a problem with that actually. I like gentleman attention, but, um, <laughs> but uh, well, my trips to Cuba, I was meeting a lot of women and um, I was never seeing them out on the scene. and. Um, you know, I would be at a jam session or I would be at the jazz festival. And I was also, my husband and I were, were taking instruments to the conservatories in Cuba and working with some of the young students because I, I like being around young people and um, give me a lot of energy and ideas too because they've got fresh ears and minds and et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, I was meeting these young women and then I'd be out in the evenings and I wouldn't, they wouldn't have their instruments with them. And I would say, well, you know, what the heck? Why aren't you up here? I'm up here playing with all the guys. Where's your violin? Where's your trombone? And they would be, no, 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 no. My boyfriend's up there playing. It's like, the hell with your boyfriend. You should be up here playing too. You play great. Come on. That's the only way you learn. You jump in, you know, you jump into the jam session and that's how you develop your skills. So <clears throat> that was always a sort of a, a strange thing to me. And I would try to encourage women. And then guess it's almost now seven years ago I can't believe it so fast but um my husband got sick of me talking about it I have not seen any women Cuban women out on the scene and finally said well stop talking about it and do something like let's go down let's gather you know people that we feel have that want to play jazz that want to improvise because that was a very important element to me I am a jazz musician first um when you talk about the creator as a master plan, you know, one of the first musicians that I loved so much when I started to play was Farrell Saunders, mm -hmm. um, Leon Thomas, like all these, these very, um, you know, adventuresome, creative, of course, Coltrane, of course, 
uh, there's a long Billy Harper, this big, big list of, of, I got early into the sort of postmodern jazz. And then I, as I started to learn about jazz, I, then I, you know, I discovered Charlie Parker before I discovered Coltrane. So it, I went backwards. So my background is really jazz music. So that was important to me to meet women that, that wanted to improvise, but also maintaining the Afro-Cuban roots, which is what hit me on my first trip to Cuba in 1982. Mm -hmm. So when I went there, I really had no idea, you know, of the music that was going to hit me. Oof. Yeah, it, I mean, it just, and it just hit me like a lightning bolt. As many, you know, many people say, when you discover something that, you you didn't know existed. I had played a little bit in salsa bands in Toronto, being an improvising artist. Um, often the horn sections, you know, would would fill out with like, uh, well, in Toronto, Canadian musicians. Even though the band leader might be from Colombia or Chile or Peru, we didn't have any Cubans at that point. The Cubans were all going to New York, <laughs> but we had you know Mexicans, people from Chile, Colombia, El Salvador. And sometimes I would play in these bands. So I had a little bit of an idea of Latin American music, but not the Cuban thing. And so in 82, when I went there and I heard some of the folkloric, the rumba, the, the, the groups that were playing rumba, and then later song, you know, if you went out to the more rural places, you hear the song, S-O-N song. And, and then um, <clears throat> as I, continued to travel there, I got all these just incredible musics in my head that, and then, then I, I did a, some records with, with some Cuban greats, but once again, they were all men. Um, Yoruba and Dabo, and uh, working with Pedrito Martinez and uh, Clave Juan Juan Co. Um, I started to develop my thing mm -hmm. with jazz and the Afro-Cuban sound, but still, once again, I was the only woman there. Yeah. And so when the time came, uh, I went, went to Cuba and sort of, I didn't want to say audition people because I was kind of sneaky about it, but started sussing the scene out. And I picked, I picked the personalities mm -hmm. out that I thought would fit. And at first it was, it was really, it was tricky because um, everyone was at various stages, our pianist, Dainai Olano, was a classical piano player and she was just starting to like learn how to improvise and uh, her bass player was actually a classical bassoonist she didn't even play bass but she was so musical that she borrowed a bass and she started figuring that out wow. and so she ended up being in the band and um you see garcia who's one of the original members she was a little bit out on the scene and uh, so i knew i needed a key drummer Mm -hmm. I knew that was the most important thing was to pick the drummer first. Mm -hmm. And um, I learned that very early um, when I started to play jazz, when I was going to places like the Village Vanguard and stuff Now you like got to tell me why that's important, picking the well, drummer first. Well, because everything comes from the drums. Ooh. Everything comes, the fire, that's the right. whole heartbeat to your group. I learned that one night when I was at the Village Vanguard and I, I was pretty pretty young and I went to and I sat pretty much right beside Tony Williams symbols and um I just watched Tony Williams and I just I just thought oh my god he's just generating like so much throughout the, the members of the group and so when I returned to, to Toronto and started to you know put together my own band I looked for the very very best drummer I could find um, in Toronto at the time whose name was Claude Roger actually from Montreal mm -hmm. and um, yeah so Yussi was was a little bit out on the scene starting to play uh, with 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 guys mm -hmm. and um, and then and then Yusuf was the was the bass player tres player she's quite wonderful so anyway we we and Daimi Arosena of course who's a terrific voice she's now out on her own doing her own things and remarkable but yeah, so so it was a it it was just a one off. I thought, what the hell, you know? Now, how um, challenging was that? Because I feel like with culture, and I come from a background of uh, my my 
my culture is Caribbean, where mm-hmm. I find that sometimes the women are asked to take that back seat, to be the girlfriend that sits there and yeah. enjoys and supports from the background. And mm-hmm. sometimes it might be hard to get pushed out to the front. Did you find any kind of no, not or were the what, women ready to go? <laughs> they're ready. They were ready to go. They really were ready to go. I mean, um, when we, f- it, it was c- pretty, our, that first record was pretty magical, even though it was so hard. And we went to three different studios and recording in Cuba is not an easy thing. Like the first studio we went to the piano, something broke on the piano. And then the bass player, she had a bass that was broken and then she didn't tell me it was broken. So it was sounding horrendous. And then we went to another studio and something else happened there. We were there for about uh, a week and a half uh, and only recorded our first record in like three days, but having to move from studio to studio and also um, our first few days of rehearsal before we recorded was disastrous because um, Cuba was experiencing blackouts uh, during the day. And I was, you know, organizing a rehearsal at two in a basement place. And I would go down there and I was feeling my way, you know, Helen Keller through the, the hallways trying to, you know, um, in, in, in darkness, get in the room, the lights would go on for a minute and then boom, off for two hours. So our initial rehearsal for the group was not exactly what I expected, but the, under the circumstances, we got to kind of know each other better because we were sort of in a extreme situation. So a lot of time was taken up in the studio making that first record, rehearsing because we hadn't properly rehearsed. But anyway, that record, which was our first, McKeke ended up getting a Juno Award, which is the Canadian Grammy type thing. And that was in 2015. And then after that, I thought, well, let's let's start with bringing the girls to Canada and we'll do a, um, a tour across Canada for the summer jazz festivals. And we did that and it was, it went, it was very, very successful. And I think that's when the group really started to bond. And I thought, wow, maybe we should keep this going. And we, and then we petitioned to come into the US and that was our next um, big challenge because uh, as a group, we have to um, petition the state, US State Department to come into the United States. And that's about a year. We have to work a year in advance with our dates. And very, very tricky, but um, we succeeded at that. And we've continued to do that now with um, now three records out. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing stops great music from, from getting out to the people. And I find that jazz music is built for hard times. So three different studios, blackouts, it's, <laughs> yeah. nothing was going to stop you yeah. women from creating this music at all. Yeah, it turned out, it turned out great. And it's been, yeah, it's, it's been very, very rewarding. Our, our second our second CD, Odara, received a, a Grammy nomination in 2018. So that was that was pretty nice. And then our third CD um, is our most recent one, which is called On Firm Ground. Yeah. And that's received some pretty good reviews. And now we're working on our fourth. Wow, wow. Now I've read that you often refer to the uh, women of Makeke in, in a like in a maternal way, if I'm saying that correctly. Um, there's a connection that I feel you have with these women outside of just playing music with them. Um, well, I have to be totally honest. They're looking after me more uh, than I'm looking after them right now. I'm, I'm pretty beat up, to be honest with you. <laughs> and uh, they have a lot of energy, you know, they, they, they're, um, and they're helping me with all the, te- you know, the technological stuff. And oh, I can't, yeah. like, I can't do this 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 instagram and all this stuff and they just seem it's so easy for them they just like uh, got it at their fingertips like for example the, the piano the pianist just helped me like hook up with you because i was sitting here fretting she's not there i just sent you an email she's not there it's five o'clock I said jane jane just chill she's not ready to do it yet You'll, she'll invite you when it's time so they I, yeah what started out me kind of looking after them they would come from Cuba and stay in our home with my husband and I, and we would look after them. But now on the road, they are really looking after me. Wow. Did you ever see something like this in, in your future? Um, just really, even, even the connection with the women in, in Cuba and 
I can't imagine. I would love to really even talk with the women. I can't imagine what they have to say about you and how you change their lives. Don't, don't you dare ask them. <laughs> Better not. <laughs> oh, look, you know, my mother, motherly uh, relationships can be complicated, but I get that you changed so many lives and, and, and brought them to places, even in music, that they probably didn't even... I can imagine someone saying, no, I'm just here to watch my boyfriend and now just performing all over the world. Because that's yeah, pretty, it's, I find, I think it's incredible myself, Absolutely. but you know what? These girls, they, I'm from the, no, they, I don't know, no flies on me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Nicole, these, wow. it, it's a different era. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's, these guys are, um, I don't think they sit back and go, uh, isn't this amazing what, what's happened for me? That's just like, bring it on. I'm ready to do my thing. Bring it on, fearless. I'm ready. Yeah, yeah. yeah. fearless. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which we are as women, you know, we can handle a lot. And um, sometimes they, people look at our tears as weakness, but I look at it as just, you know, we're, it's cleansing and we're able to just wipe them away and, and move on. And, it, and I love that we get to experience women from other cultures and countries because what they bring, their strength is something. Yeah, we well, you know what? From. I mean, especially right now, I keep, I, you know, I think this is not to get like maudlin or anything like that, but, um, you know, this has been extremely hard, mm -hmm. uh, this tour, but I keep reflecting on what's going on in the Ukraine, right. not to get political. And I just keep saying, these poor women, these poor families, what they are being subjected to right now, uh, those are the real, those are, the superheroes right now yeah. how they're conducting their lives so this is you know this is just music and i just i just hope that you know i can always um pull myself together no matter how tired i am to get up there and, and and play well well that's what those women are there for to keep you it's my my grandmother has always told me I love to be around the youth because they keep me young. They they keep me so yeah. active and fresh. It's true. Young people do because they're just, um, you know, they have, it, it takes a long time before your worries start to like, you know, you know, pile up on your shoulders and stuff. And that's, that's the great thing about um, getting on the stage with these girls because when they do get on the stage and when we do get on the stage, it's, we don't take it for granted. This is, it's taken a lot from us to get from A to B, to go, to have come from Havana. Our bass player is from a very, very small town outside of Havana called Winnaste. Uh, her name's Taylor Morero. She's an incredible talent and singer, composer. She's from this little tiny, tiny town. And, um, and when all the red tape that we've had to do, um, especially right now, you know, with the PCRs and the antigen tests, um, the canceled flights, it was one day that we, we, we were supposed to have an hour and 15 minute flight and we were 24 hours in the airport with four canceled flights being delayed, canceled, delayed. And finally we made the fifth and we arrived like, um, we were supposed to, you know, we arrived like basically halfway through our own show when we were to play. Um, so we jump through these hoops and so when the girls get on the stage they're really really ready you know to show what they can do because it's been it's been a huge um a lot of effort to get to that stage yeah speaking mm -hmm. of I know you mentioned one of the uh one of the women let's let's talk about all of them and and, and I wish they were here to of course give themselves an introduction but who better than you <laughs> They're running around outside. I can see them. They're out having to just experience some, some nature here, which is yeah. which is nice before we get to New York. Well, um, our pianist, I mentioned Dan. I, she was the one who was helping me <laughs> set up the Zoom. She's an incredible um, talent. She's one of the original members of Makeke. Um, she came in second in all of Cuba uh, in the national piano classical competition. So she is a tremendous a tremendous um, classical pianist. She could rock any symphony hall with Chopin, Bach, Rachmaninoff, you name it. Very, very, very talented. And composing, you know, some of the stronger numbers that we have that we perform in um, Makeke. She's amazing. Um, our bassist, Taylor Morero, graduated from one of Cuba's conservatories. Oh, they're all, 
all the graduates of the conservatory except for our percussionist who has another story. But anyway, let's talk about Taylor Marrero. Taylor is from Guianese, Cuba, graduated from ANA, one of the national music schools um, on classical guitar, but then later got interested, you know, what happens with a lot of people you see, there's like, hmm, looks, looks like it'd be fun to be out there playing rock and jazz. And, and so she started, she picked up the bass. And so she now plays bass, um, acoustic and, and still plays guitar and sings great. So she's um, a marvelous talent. Yissi Garcia, um, Yissi Garcia is also has her own band called Bandancha, very interesting group that she's working with turntables and all kinds of uh, very uh, uh, exciting sounds. And um, she's super strong drummer. Uh, her dad, his name is um, Bernardo Garcia, and he was the drummer with Arturo Sandoval and uh, also with um, Chucho Valdez and Eric Chiere. Um, so he's a legendary drummer. So she sort of grew up with the music yeah. and she's, she's wonderful. And then there's uh, Mary Paz, who's our percussionist, who plays the bata drums, the religious um, uh, drums of Cuba and congas and all percussion, super talented, composing too and singing. She's from Havana. She learned pretty much um, from hands-on with, with the master congeros uh, in Cuba, the great, great people like um, Oscar Valdez and Tatawine, so many, so many of the guys, you know, that's a really, really macho scene to get into, especially as a woman, because for years, women were not even allowed to touch that. Number one, they, they were not, they were prohibited to play that tad drums and, and very seldom you would see women playing congas, but she learned, that's how she learned, like right, you know, um, on the street, yeah. as they say. And uh, Mary Paz, and that's Mary Paz. And then we have our newer member of the group, but newer member being now three and a half years, Joanna Majoko. So she is just an incredible uh, vocalist. Um, I, she kind of has, brings a neo soul sound, neo soul jazz thing to the group, but has been studying, you know, the, the, the Cuban music, just like this afternoon, they were out here drumming on the patio which is pretty cool. And uh, she, her background is really interesting because she was born in Germany, but her dad's uh, from Zimbabwe and her mom is German. And she grew up in, in, in Zimbabwe. Born in Germany, her father took her back to Zimbabwe and she grew up there uh, until she was in her late teens. And then they moved to uh, a place called Flim Flom, which is in Northern Manitoba. It's like Hell's Half Acre, as they say. And then finally made it down to Winnipeg where she graduated from um, the jazz studies program there. And then I found her on Facebook. I saw her, I needed a, a, a vocalist because Daimi had gone off to do her own thing. And um, I saw her, she was sitting at the piano singing along with Charlie Parker solos. And I was like, she was playing the piano singing, you know, these solos. And I was like, wow, she has pipes. She's, she's got something special. So she joined the group. So is that everybody? I think that's everyone. Yeah, so we're a six-piece ensemble, Afro-Cuban jazz. Nice, nice. So Birdland, which is, what, it's the uh, jazz corner of the world. That's Did I say that correctly? It's it sure been a did. wild. Actually, the last time I was at Birdland, I actually, um, that my little girl was was in my tummy. So she went to oh. Birdland too. And it's such a great, a great room uh, for music. So you're going to be there. The, the ladies are going to be there. What? can people expect when they get to not only just hear and see you, but they feel Jane Bennett and McKay Cause this is music that yeah. know, it, it's all over. You feel it. Well, I think, you know, um, you're going to hear something that is very, very unique that you have not heard before. That's what I would really say with our group McKay. -K. Um, we, we really were highly percussive. We're a highly percussive group, but uh, four out of the six members um, sing. So we have like these very strong harmonies that happen all through uh, the all through the, the tune. So if I'm soloing, there's these four vocal backgrounds that are happening all through 
uh, the music. So that's how how the music has been composed. And uh, here come a couple of the girls now. Maybe throw them on. <laughs> hey, you guys want to say hi to Nicole? Hi. <laughs> uh, they were. And just, I can imagine uh, it's something different every night. They were just. Yeah, it sure is. Here's here's the. Uh, this is Mary Paz, our percussionist. Hi there. Yeah, you know, they were just out hunting rabbits. Uh, there's there's Joanna. She's she's Hi from there. the one who's from Zimbabwe. Yeah. Oh nice. Yeah. We're just talking about you. <laughs> yeah. So there's two of the girls, and um, yeah, I was just joking about them out shooting rabbits. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> Nasty. Yes, I can imagine every night there's something. I mean, is it is there a time where you're like, I don't even know what, I don't even know what to expect, but I know it's going to be good because of course you trust these these women at this point. Yeah, well, I mean, at this point, you know, we have we have lived together, we have traveled together so much in the car, hanging out in airports. Um, we, you know, have really honed a very, you know, people have said that there's no group that sounds like our group. Mm. Um, Downbeat very kindly said that uh, that we were one of the best touring groups out on the scene. <laughs> That's during COVID. Who's going out and touring? But anyway, <laughs> but they did say that, and that was a, a special thing to hear because, <coughs> excuse me, I think our sound is unique. You know, our histories. You know, you get in, you you develop a unique group because of your people in your group are super individual, super unique. They bring something like very, you know, special. I mean, I, I think about it in the same way as Ellington, how, I don't think I'm Ellington, but you know how Ellington, he picked unique individuals to, to make the sound. And, and I guess most people, when they're creating something, you do, you try and suss out the people that are, have special voices and, and a, a unique approach. Right. But collectively, we come together and we workshop our tunes too. Like we we rehearse a lot and we everybody throws in their ideas. So like once you compose a piece, you kind of give it up a bit to the band and and be prepared to be open to people's suggestions. You know, let's try this, let's try that. That's a great thing with having the girls from Cuba because. I am not Cuban, even though I love the music and I study, you know, the, the genre hard, they still know ultimately that is their music. That is the music they grew up with. So they, they're really able to inform and I am able to inform, I think, them with the taste of when they're at my home, my music collection, because I've got like you know, I have everything from Charlie Parker, Lester Young, right up into the Art Ensemble of Chicago to you name it, you know, like all kinds of uh, all kinds of music that they maybe have never been exposed to. So I'm able to kind of bring something to them, too. Yeah. And that's maybe where that that motherly a connection comes from. Um, they're always learning yeah. from you, and and we learn from our we learn from our kids as well. It's actually a a two way street. I found that out as I became a parent. Like, oh, I I don't do all the teaching. Yeah, I get, I get taught as well. That's kind of it's a hard thing to accept in a way, but it's really true because I mean, if you want to grow, you do have to be open uh, to other people's ideas. And sometimes I have been a little hesitant. I'm like, hey, I can't, I'm not gonna do that. Da, da. And now I'm starting to realize, okay, yeah, I, I gotta, I gotta grow with this, you know. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah, I love that. So what what would you say is the most important? I, I think the important lesson that I, I got from even this story is don't talk about it, be about it, which I think that came from your husband. He he wow. pushed you into just stop. Yeah. And I'm so glad he that he did because we wouldn't have this. We wouldn't have this experience. This was meant to be. And I, I don't know if you knew that at, at the time. No, wow. no, it's a hard, it's a, it's unusual. It, you know, these things, you, it's always hard to see something, you know, when you're in the middle of it. And then, then as you grow out of a situation, you look back on it and you say, wow, um, I, in the, you know, in hindsight, I didn't realize all of this 
was happening. And uh, yeah, that's just a, a very fact of life, isn't it? Uh, that you you grow with all this, the situations that are just, that you go through and some of it's really hard and some of it's really fun. And I don't know, I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm a, a real fan of jazz history and I love reading people's autobiographies if it's, you know, Billie Holiday or if it's UV Blake or if it's Art Pepper. And I just gobble that, those, those people's writings up because what they experienced and how they toughed it out and and things don't change right i mean things have been things have been really difficult because of covid so we're, we're sort of dealt with a bunch of new things but in terms of the jazz life when you dedicate yourself to the the music and and you're you are a creative artist and and trying to be a band leader none of that has ever changed it's pretty much um you buy into that that lifestyle because you you want the freedom of of a life of being a creative person, and um, there's no short, there's no real shortcuts I, unless you may get a sugar daddy or something like that. But not too many of those in the jazz world. So, yeah. <laughs> sugar daddies come out to Birdland. I'm looking for a sugar daddy. <laughs> Well, you know, I'm again. I'm so glad that the master plan was for Jane, for you to to feel this connection uh, with these women, and to and and to even see that they had a need for you. Sitting at that bar instead of being on the stage, they needed you to come to them and say, "How about you get on stage?" And now we're here. Yeah. Um, Grammy nominations, Juno awards. Birdland, you're touring and making changes changes in these women's lives. So I think that's a message for everyone. If you feel something in your heart and you want to make a change, I know sometimes, Jane, we think, what can I do? Little old me. But if you take that next step, you'd be surprised at the yeah, end. Yeah, well, it's it's been enriching for me too. So uh, today, I mean, today I'm pretty low. I'm pretty flat as a pancake, but tomorrow... I won't be. <laughs> so, well, you got you got some energetic ladies around you, so I think you'll be you'll be fine. I do indeed. That's for sure. Oh my yeah. goodness, that's for sure. It's going to be a great time at Birdland, uh, March fifteenth through the nineteenth. If you can get out there, enjoy this music. I always encourage our listeners to get out and enjoy it because it's an experience that you can always take with you. You never forget a, how you felt. And it's, a, it, and it's a great club because you got your space, yeah. you know, you got your really nice, nice tables. It's beautifully laid out. The sound is always uh, spectacular there. So I know that is a given and they got good food and yeah. it's a, it's a nice, hang, it's a, it's a nice hang because it's a, it's a family, it's a family, you know, all the people that have been working there, have been working there for a long time and they're like they're like family together too so the experience is really nice at, at birdland that's sure. right and and of course we have to support uh these venues that are still standing you know after yeah hard, it's remarkable hard couple of years that we've had we have to go out and support them because no one else but us will do it so birdland get out there enjoy feel and enjoy jane Bennett and the amazing women of makeke <laughs> It's going to be a good time. Are they are they allowed to get up and dance, Jane? I need to know that. I I'm just going to say yes, but I'm not sure. I mean, on the stage we dance a little bit, but right. uh, you know, I just have to say, like uh, my travels through uh, the United States right now, the United States is much more um, progressive in terms of um, the clubs and things that are happening. And in in Canada, we're really, you know, we're still the mask thing is still pretty mm. tight and. Um, and the restriction, we still have a lot of restrictions um, and a lot of clubs have closed, yeah. which is a very sad fact in Canada for us. So um, <clears throat> I'm thrilled to be, you know, going to be a Birdland, which is a real jazz club. That's right. <laughs> That's right. And of course, when you talk about real jazz, I mean, this is where it's at, right? WBGO, 88.3 yeah, I love, as I was saying to you, Nicole, 